Hi, I recently came across this demo which inverts text on scroll. And if you've seen my previous video, then you probably know where this is going. We can do it in pure CSS using a new and exciting feature called scroll driven animations. Also, we are going to be doing some things differently from last time in order to explore other CSS tricks you might not know about. So let's dive into it. Okay, we already have the text. We're going to maximize the CSS panel because we won't be writing anything else. And for scroll, we need a scroll bar, which we create by making something overflow. For example, the HTML element by giving it a height that's bigger than the viewport height. For example, twice the viewport height. It can be five times, doesn't matter. Okay, I hope you can see the scroll bar, but we don't want the text to go up as we scroll. So we're going to fix its position. So it's going to get position fixed. Uh, it's not going to get display grid and we're not going to make it cover the entire viewport like we did last time. We're going to place it in the middle. So we're going to set top 50%. And what this does, it aligns the top edge of its margin box to the 50% horizontal line of the viewport. Now it looks a bit lower because it has a vertical margin. But if we zero the margin, you'll be seeing it go up a bit. Okay, the same thing left 50%. But this is going to make its top left corner be at the 50%, 50% point of the viewport. Not what we want. We want the actual element to be centered. And we can achieve that by taking advantage of a very old trick, which says that percentages, when used for a translation, are relative to the dimensions of the element being translated. They have nothing to do with the parent, as it is the case for margin or padding, other stuff like that. Uh, this is something I detailed in an article, which I'll be linking. Maybe it's still useful for someone after all these years. Now let's, we already have individual transform properties, so we can use those. They're not very useful in a lot of cases, but for really simple shit like this, they're just fine. Now, what this means is move this along the X axis by 50% of its width and the minus sign means move it in the negative direction of the x-axis, so towards the left. And the second one, move it by 50% of its height along the y-axis in the negative direction because we have minus. Okay, now let's prettify the font. So font, blow it up, and um, something like this. Okay, now you're going to see why we did not set display grid because in that case, we wouldn't be able to have this. First line doesn't work if we have display grid or display flex. So let's say we have font size, something like this. And something that I don't like is how this element is getting squished to the width of its widest uh, word, which in this case is animations. So let's set an explicit width on it let's say 8 m's and now you can see how it overflows so we're going to need to make the font depend on the viewport and we're going to use a clamp for which we don't even have autocomplete we're going to set a lower boundary and then the variable viewport units um, value which is basically going to be 100 viewport units divided by that 8. So that's going to be 12.5. Okay, and now you can see how it fits and we can reduce this and it's still going to fit. Okay, now text align center so that it's dead in the middle. Okay, now something else uh, we can do here is um, color. Um, actually, let's set it. Um, we're going to set it to white here, but uh, we want to first set it here to orange. Okay. And um, here we're going to want to set a background to black. And now you're going to see that white text uh, once more. And I think we can just uh, collapse this bar because we won't be needing it anymore. And something else that we are going to add is a pseudo element. And this is also going to get position fixed, but it's going to cover its entire parent. So it's going to get inset zero. This is basically a shorthand for top zero, right zero, bottom zero, left zero. All of them just uh, in one. 
content because otherwise we won't be seeing it. And let's give it a background, uh, deep pink. Okay, now uh, you can see it. And something else we can do, again, individual transform properties, let's say 0.5 but we only want to scale it along one dimension, so only horizontally. And we don't want the transform origin to be dead in the middle. So um, it doesn't get scaled relative to the middle. We want it to get scaled relative to its right edge. So for that, transform origin 100% along the x-axis. Okay, so um, that's cool, but we want the scale to be in an animation. So we are going to have keyframes, um, slide, and it's going to be something like that, but it's going to go from zero. Okay, and here we're going to have animation, uh, slide, linear, Let's see it. Okay, but we want it to be attached on scroll. So we're going to have animation timeline scroll. And if you remember last time we had um, root in there, but it doesn't really matter because by default, it's the nearest um, ancestor that has a scroll bar. In this case, it's the HTML. So now you can see it. Okay, but there is no inversion for the moment. And the way we get inversion is we are going to set this uh, background to white. Okay, this is not really inversion because we won't be seeing the white text. But one really cool thing we can do is use blend modes. Uh, a while ago, I wrote a massive article on two blend modes, which were difference and exclusion. And using one of these, if one of the layers is white, you're going to see in a moment just what happens. So if one of the layers is white, the result of blending the two layers is the other layer inverted. So the result is as if we applied a filter invert up to 100% on the other layer. Okay, so I'll be linking to this as well. So here we can set mix blend mode, exclusion, and now, oh, yeah, now it works. So that's really cool. And in Chrome with uh, the flag enabled, it works as well. In Chrome with the flag disabled, yeah, nothing happens. Okay. At least we have a graceful degradation, but we can still uh, do it like we did before and put it all inside the supports. Oh. Supports, right? And um, fix the alignment. And um, this is going to be the support test, right? So Right. Okay. Now something else we can do is also add a support uh, info box, just like we had here. And we are just going to uh, copy paste it all. Right. And the styles, we're also going to just uh, copy paste them. Okay, now, okay, but we don't want this to be displayed if we have support. So here, we are going to set display none, right? So it's not shown and it works. And in other browsers, yeah, Epiphany has issues. Yeah, just uh, nothing happens. Okay. So same here. 
where we don't have a support for scroll driven animations because we haven't enabled the flag. Okay, now something else we can do is uh, prettify the scroll bar. And um, I've heard people say that you shouldn't do this because yeah you're messing with what people are used to but you know if you're going to do it just make sure you have good contrast and all that which is precisely what's not happening with uh, orange on that let's say if we have something like that how does it work no, that's still very bad. Um, let's make it orange red. And revert back to that. Should be better in Chrome. Orange red. Okay, this is better. We have better contrast. Let's see it in Chrome too. Yeah, that's that's much better contrast. Okay, so that's it. I won't be tweaking it any further. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, if you like the work that I'm putting out for over a decade now and you want me to be able to do more in the future, please consider supporting it. You can do so by being a cool cat and becoming a patron on Patreon or if monthly support is not your style, there's the option of a one-time donation. The links for everything are going to be in the description or you could at least share this to show the role that can be done with CSS these days because honestly, I think it's pretty damn cool. In any event, Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.